Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Uh, I've got an exciting little lesson that we're going to go over today, um, and you're going to be learning real time with me. I've never done this before, but I need to make uh, the part you're looking at right here, which is a half inch inside diameter, three quarter inch outside diameter um, shaft damper for an axle. It's made out of a urethane and it needs to be somewhere around 40 or 50 uh, durometer. If you're not familiar with the uh, durometer scale, and I should have clarified, it needs mine needs to be 40 to 50 on the Shore A scale, just go to McMaster Car. Their website's a really a, a great source of information. And if you just type in rubber, you'll scroll down to the page and you'll see a little section on durometer. And you can see Shore A, 40 to 50 is medium soft, about like a pencil eraser. So that's what we're going for. Um, what I'm doing today is I've got this piece modeled up in Bobcat here. And I've got uh, a grid of 12 little sample molds that I'm going to mill out. And you'll see later in the video exactly how I'm going to do that. Um, but the idea here is to mill them out, place a little plug in the center, and then use this urethane rubber compound that I bought from the folks at SmoothOn called PMC744, which is supposed to go uh, cure to a sh uh, Shore A44, which should be perfect. I bought their little sample kit here, um, which with the requisite mold release agent, which you need to spray in the mold when you're done, or excuse me, before you cast it, this whole kit delivered was about 50 bucks. And obviously it looks like this is going to make uh, you know, a significant more amount than I need right now. So here's where I am right now. I've got my aluminum block uh, ready and I've marked out the center holes and I'm going to throw this on the drill press and drill out the approximate center hole before I put it on the mill and start pocketing out. I do that just because I, I don't like plunging with the mills as much and uh, the inside tolerance of the drill hole isn't that important since the end mill will be what actually creates the geometry. All right, I'm ready to mill. I've got the holes drilled out to 5 16 which gives me plenty of clearance to plunge a quarter inch end mill. This is a two flute OSG high speed steel uh, end mill. It's a pretty high quality one. I'm going to be spinning it at 57 or 100 RPMs at about 10 inches a minute, which is a little under a thou chip load per tooth. And then I will be taking about a 35 thou depth of cut um, on each little pass. So here we go. And we're off. Uh, it's a little bit uh, distorted because I'm shooting the video through my enclosure, but um, it's uh, the mill sounds great and uh, should be fine. I'm not going to shoot a lot of video footage right now of the milling because I want to focus more on the mold work. Here's the mold. I have milled it out, as you can see, and my next step is to ream out the holes that protrude all the way through. I milled them slightly undersized uh, because my mill has some backlash, not having bolt screws, but rather having Acme screws, so um, left a few thousands. I'll ream them out. I'm actually going to ream them out to a .499 reamer I've got in the drill press right there which is a half thou under because these little aluminum shafts that I'm using are extruded aluminum and I measured them uh, with a micrometer and they are slightly undersized as well. So I've actually already done one and if you see when I push it in there it's a nice firm fit um, and what that will allow me to do is uh, cast it and then uh, I might put something on top of here um, or I could just push it out the back. So I'm going to ream out the rest of these holes and uh, I'll be right back. Alright, so I um, decided to take a fly cut, uh, just maybe a thou or so along the top, um, which I did to deburr. Um, it wasn't particularly easy to use a hand tool to deburr the inside of those radiuses. And it did a pretty good job. There's still a little bit of burr on them, but it was better than it was before. 
so we'll see. Like I said, I have never poured this urethane casting agent before, so um, we'll see if what burr may be left there causes a problem with my the way the um, you know once they cured and how they're pulled out of the mold. But it looks really nice now with the uh, top of it fly cut. So now I will show you uh, with the dowel centers in the. All right, I have inserted my. Uh, half inch aluminum dowel rods which I cut on the lathe. You may ask why I use these instead of uh, steel dowel pins. Uh, well two things. One, these are actually cheaper. It didn't take me long to make them versus uh, dowel pins. And second of all, I may contemplate adding a perpendicular shaft through each of these to create uh, the, the requisite hole that's in the part versus having to drill it after I cast it. But for starters I'm just going to do it this way. Um, I'm really happy with the fit of all the dowel pins. One of them is a little bit loose. As you can see, when I lift it up here, it'll sort of pop out. The rest of them are quite good, and I experimented off camera by pouring water in each one of them, and they're all watertight. So the uh, viscosity of the uh, molding agent should be fine in there. You may be wondering how I'm going to get it, the molding agent in there, and that's a good question. Um, from the uh, tutorial videos on SmoothOn's website, they discussed that it's important to do sort of two things. One is to pour it slowly so that you don't create air pockets and two to try to start the pour from the lowest point of the mold um, and so I think what I'm going to do is use a syringe um, that will definitely allow me to control the flow and direct the excuse me control the rate of the flow and the direction of the flow um, that will also mean that it's pouring down for the, from the top instead of starting at the bottom so if that doesn't work um, I may try adding a hypodermic needle that I've ground down to the tip of my syringe which would allow me to start in the bottom. I'm going to do the casting in a different video since I'm out of time. Um, so that's it for now.